Company contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Uh, you made a good point a couple of moments ago when you said it is still winter, isn't it? It is. Um, we we really don't want to admit that, but it's February 23rd. We still got a month of winter to go. At least. <laughs> yeah. This is Western Pennsylvania after all. But I talked to all those folks down south uh, that I have as, as guests on the program and they say, oh, we're going to 78 today. Well, that's not happening here. <laughs> no. So we have to be a little bit more patient, don't we? We, we do. It's easy to to get fooled mm-hmm. or to want to charge out there and do too many things. Yeah. You know, there's always things we can do. I mean, it's it's great weather to at least get out and look things over. You know, even if you just do that once a week, just kind of peruse around Check things out. Survey. Make sure, yeah, do a survey. Look look your plants over, um, as well as other things, you know, just to mm-hmm. – the effects of winter, the freezing and thawing. You know, we're still getting those cycles, so that that can uh, cause problems in itself, you know, and moisture. Um, but we're more focused here on <laughs> yards and gardens and things, so. Well, I want to focus on my first stop when I survey the yard is going to be the grapevine. Uh, and is it time yet, or should I wait a little longer before can, I prune those things? You can probably wait a little longer. You probably don't have to because they're probably conquered grapes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they they're are. they're pretty hardy, and and a, a mm-hmm. lot of the grapes would be already pruned by now. Yeah. So yeah, you can you can dive into that, and you know, and that, and again, there's a crop that needs annual care, annual pruning, uh, and then we have. Our apple trees, um, pear trees, our fruiting trees, them. those, you know, it's time to, to look at those should um, and even be, start pruning those. Should should we be thinking back uh, to what they look like in, in the height of their growing season and whether it is, is the guide at which we're looking going to be um, how bent over were those limbs <laughs> uh, overburdened with fruit last year? Is, is that the number one guideline that we should look at. That's definitely something that needs to be, yes, considered uh, because that will, can influence how much pruning you do. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have too many limbs uh, and and especially apple trees and pear trees do the same thing, but they produce a lot of wood. Uh, They like to grow, you know, as long as they're in a reasonable site, uh, they will put on growth Mm -hmm. and they, Put on excessive growth. Um, if we're getting between one to two feet of growth a year, that's very ample. If we're getting more than that, then we need to start looking at, well, why is that? Are, is our soil very fertile uh, naturally? Are we applying fertilizers and compost uh, to that ground on an annual basis or more often uh, that's kind of fueling that fire, mm-hmm. uh, making excessive growth? Uh, because with a fruit tree, We've got to go in and we've got to keep it open. We have to have good structure in that tree to support the fruit load. Mm-hmm. That's we're after the fruit, and we need to provide that structure that all those limbs and branches in that trunk are a framework um, to be able to support fruit. So we think of the shade of the old apple tree. Yeah, uh, and, and we shouldn't we shouldn't have it be all pervasive. Uh, we should be, allow some sun to get through so it can can feed those branches too, and they can bear. That's, that's right. That's why we have shade trees. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot of species of trees that will make shade, um, and that are ornamental trees that we want to have for that purpose. But if we want to be able to get light into our fruiting trees mm-hmm. uh, so that they can make good fruit and and higher quality fruit and colored fruit. Um, you can even look in a tree and fruit that might be farther back in towards the trunk. Uh, if we've got a lot of shading there, the fruit out on the edge of the branches will be colored the way it's supposed to be for uh-huh. the most part. But as you get back in the tree, if that fruit changes, um, say you have less, say you have uh, a red fruited variety, um, as you get back in, there may be less. It may be a little bit more greener, a little bit more yellower. Um, it won't be that good, rich red color that that it's supposed to be. And light has a very important 
role in that? A lot of people are going to be really reticent about uh, going up and looking at that upper canopy and saying, uh, you know, that's a really good looking, nice <laughs> thick branch with great, great leaves. And uh, I, I hate to cut that off. That That's a good one. I think I'll keep that one. And I think I'll keep that one over there. And pretty soon they're not, not really affecting much change right. at all. Yeah, not doing much. Takes some courage um, to cut that off, it, doesn't it? It does. And it's a, it's a different type of pruning. Um, and it's kind of special to fruit trees mm -hmm. uh, because you want to go in there and do that. And you can be very aggressive um, or you can back off a little bit. You know, the more aggressive you get, especially if you're making what they call heading cuts or just chopping the ends of the branches off, mm -hmm. um, those types of cuts will stimulate new growth. So we we have to... So it goes back in the other direction. It goes right. It makes you even more work. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to, again, look at that structure. And over the first five, six years, even seven years, life of that tree, where really it's in a training period, where we're trying to get the limbs going in the right directions, uh, the right number of limbs spaced apart, and, and trying to get a good structure there. The branches, we we would really prefer them not to be horizontal mm -hmm. uh, because on an apple tree, a horizontal branch, there are buds that you can't see that are in that branch that are called latent buds. Um, we have a horizontal branch. Well, those buds are going to pop because somebody wants to be the winner. Somebody wants to grow the yeah. tallest, the highest. They're going to reach uh, for the sun. Yeah. So, so here's another word, two words, apical dominance. What? Apical dominance. I so it was apical. Yeah. Because it's apples. <laughs> well, we could, we could stretch that. that apical way. dominance. <laughs> apical dominance. So that's why those branches all grow up. Mm -hmm. Everybody's competing against each other. You know, they're trying to get to the top to be the, the highest, most uh -huh. bud, uh, you know, branch on that tree. So there's competition in there. So we're trying to make our pruning cuts to not make that situation worse. Uh, but anyhow, so when it's 90 degrees like that, then you might get four, a bunch of buds opening up, making new branches. And then you've got all these branches there that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in the first year, all they're going to do is make leaves, uh, wooden leaves. Uh, they will not have flower buds on them. Yeah. So you get excessive growth in there. So if we angle those branches um, upward, then that will greatly reduce the chance of that happening. It doesn't eliminate it, but it greatly reduces it. Training a tree and how it should grow. Yeah, that's all. Wow. Whole... It, it is. It, it's very scientific, and, isn't it? And, are there there's people a lot... who specialize in that? <clears throat> yes, there are. Uh -huh. And then... You know, and it's one thing to have a freestanding tree. So we just have, we plant a apple tree. There it is in the ground. We have no support system for it. It's just there. Uh, so there's, it's probably the simplest way to train a tree is to do it that way. Mm -hmm. When we add wire or a support system to it, a trellis, uh, then, then we have to change our thinking a little bit. We're going to train it differently because now it's on a plane rather than being and I always say those open uh, trees by themselves, we try to grow them kind of like a Christmas tree shape. So wider at the bottom, pointed at the top. The narrow at the top allows more light in. Um, and as you get towards the bottom, then you've got wider branches, which will support more fruit. Uh, but we need that pyramidal shape to help let the light get into there. And then you put it on a trellis or a support system, then, then we're looking at, more of a plane. We're narrowing it in. Um, so you're trying to train those branches. You're, you're probably going to remove some branches that would come out um, east and west, and we'll keep the ones that are going north and south uh, as you look down on top of the tree. And so you're going to prune it differently because you have a structure there that you're going to lightly attach it to Gee, and then I was, there's i was just walking out in the yard to look at the tree you've got me <laughs> well you've got you me were going, going to, to look at the grapevine here. you know and most grapevines are on either a trellis uh or um an arbor an arbor yeah. you know and so again you're gonna 
those vines will grow. So you let them grow and you train them to that system. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's an arbor, that's a whole different thing because you have that canopy up above, uh, but you still need to do pruning on those mm -hmm. uh, because you can get a jungle up on top and a lot of shade and you won't get as many fruit yeah. over time because you haven't pruned that back. And it typically on um, grapevines, you're, you're doing heavy pruning every year. I'm going to, uh, we're out of time today, but uh, next week, I hope I can remember to do this. I want to <laughs> ask you about prune plums uh, huh. because they fall into that same category, don't they? Yes. Of, of uh, yeah. needing, the prunes need to be pruned. The prunes <laughs> need right. to be pruned. All right, so we'll talk about that next week, maybe, if I remember. If you remember to bring that up. <laughs> I'll try to also remember. It's the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. We are a minute away from the top of the hour. Fox News coming your way at 8.